I really haven't been focusing on hardware all that much, as you've seen on the channel. Now, when I moved from my last place, I had a gaming computer, and it was in my living room. So when someone came over or whatever, we could we could play some old games, we could play new games, you know, brand new AAA games and stuff, because it was a gaming computer. Now, it wasn't all that decked out. I had a 1080 in there. You know, it was fast enough to play a lot of the stuff I wanted to play. When I moved, I just had a little office computer that worked mostly for just Jellyfin, and, and that was my media player didn't do anything else. I couldn't really play many games on it. So I've been like wanting to upgrade. It's been frustrating. This is the Mini Sporum HX99G and it's so small and it's so fast. I'm almost embarrassed. You know, like you're like, oh, this is too fast. I didn't mean to get something this fast for my living room. I start feeling that weird shame where it's like, I think a lot of people will be using this as their primary PC because it's so ridiculous and I'm just using it as my living room PC. But that's kind of my thing, I, I guess. Let's talk about what this is. The first 20.5 centimeters across, 20.3 centimeters tall, and then 6.93 centimeters uh, wide. There are a few different options when it comes to what's under the hood. This is the 6900HX. That's the Ryzen 9. So as you can see here, um, you can have it configured different ways. You can have bare bone. This is how I've got it configured because it's mostly going to be for gaming and media. But if you want to use it for, let's say, video editing, it'll work just fine for that. If you want to use it for 3D creation, working in the Unreal Engine game dev, then you can grab one of these options, or you can just get the bare bone and install all, the, the, all of this yourself. You'll have to figure out which one between these two you're going to get, because this one's DDR5 and this one's DDR4. This CPU is going to be much better when it comes to multi-core performance, but this one's going to be great for just standard gaming stuff. And you'll be able to save a little bit of money by going for DDR4. So now, either one you pick, they're both going to have the RX 6600M, which is a very fast GPU. These will play a lot of games at 4K, pretty much any AAA game at, at 1440p. And then you can max out basically every game on the market at, at 1080p, unless there's some crazy games I don't know about. Now, if you want to upgrade this, it's really easy to, to do so. There's two rubber feet on the side. Just You just peel those off and then unscrew and you have access to the insides. I wouldn't touch the CPU or the GPU. Now these are laptop parts, even though they're extremely fast laptop parts, and they've constructed a very specific type of cooling unit. It pulls air in and then exhausts it out the top and the, and the bottom, and which is another thing. They've included in the box a little stand, and it looks pretty sleek in my opinion. So you can put this stand together, put it on the bottom, and it raises it off the table so you have maximum ventilation. And it also has a sleeker look once it's on the stand. And that's something you can do, it's optional, because you can also set this on its side. And the rubber feet should keep it off the desk a little bit. I think you'll get the maximum ventilation if you put it on the stand and have it off the desk, or off the floor, or wherever you're gonna put it. So as far as speed goes, I ran superposition at 4K, and it was really smooth. It was usually around 40 FPS. So I think it dipped down to 29, but it ran pretty smoothly at 40 FPS on 4K with superposition. So I decided to try it with a couple of games that are not Unreal Engine games, or not Unity Engine games. Went with the Red Engine, tried out Cyberpunk for a while, and I was just zooming all over Night City, and it didn't, there's no slowdown, no stutter, nothing. I mean, it just, it just runs really, really smooth. Now, I was only playing it at 1080p with everything maxed out, um, other than RTX, you know, no, no RTX on this. It does kind of crawl if you turn on RTX, but without RTX, it's extremely smooth and playable. Um, the thing, the same thing for when it comes to Deathloop. This engine can be a little more demanding, so I tried that out as well. And Deathloop is super smooth and enjoyable. I'm usually gonna be playing emulators on this machine. Yeah, it's it's that's why it's overkill. When I have people over, sometimes we go play on the old CRT and just use the Wii, but a lot of times we'll end up sitting on the couch and goofing off having a beer, and then we'll load up some games right there on the couch. And I couldn't do that with the system I had, but with this one now we can play any modern game, any PC game, and any emulator, not just the older games like Arcade and Super Nintendo, which I love, you know, I love playing arcade games on this, which I, I'm sure I'll do. I love playing Super Nintendo games on this, but it'll also play newer emulators. Uh, I'm talking like emulating the Switch. And I go out and buy my games, like I bought Breath of the Wild so I could emulate it because it runs so much better on PC than it does on the actual Nintendo hardware. Anyway, I, I'm just showing some, some GameCube on the screen right now because that's what I captured. But it's Zelda, right? So that counts. Also uh, checked out Geekbench. There you can see the numbers on the screen for the OpenCL performance and also the multi-core and the single core uh, CPU performance. And then I also did Cinebench and you can see all that on the screen. So let's talk about all the ports. And this is somewhere I have that I, uh, this is somewhere that's really impressive, but I also have a minor gripe. All right, on the front we have a USB 3.2. It's a Gen 1 Type-C port. Then we have our microphone jack and our headphone jack and those are separated. 
and then we have another USB 3.2 and this is a type A. On the back we have USB 3.2 Gen 2. That's one of those ports there. You can see it's like positioned in the middle of the other those are just 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and those are both, those are all Type A, all three of those. And then those two Type C ports, those are USB 4, and they can be used for all kinds of different things, including monitors. You can run 8K monitors on this. You can run two of those, 8K 60 Hertz. You can actually run four monitors at the same time because it'll support that and the HDMI at the same time. The HDMI won't do 8K at 60 Hertz, but you'll still be able to do 4K with those. Then there's a the power supply there. Uh, plus the RJ45 on the back, that's the gigabit port. Oh, it's actually not gigabit. I, I said it wrong. It's 2.5 gigabit, which I love because I have 2.5 gigabit in my house. It just feels so much faster. And now I can just run all the emulators and stuff straight from my NAS. It is beautiful. Now, the one gripe I have on the is that on the back, there's no audio ports. They're on the front. So if I want to hook up the old school analog plugs, I have to run a cable around to the front. And that's how my speakers are right now. I, I use that cable. So what I've ended up doing, because it's, I think it's kind of ugly, you know, I've got my whole setup and I don't want those cords going to the front. I only want to plug my headphones up to the front of this. I don't want, you know, headphones and mic are fine in the front, but even that it's so small. I'd rather have it in the back. I'd rather plug, you know, it's just an extra couple of inches or 20 centimeters or something. I'd rather just plug it up in the back. It's so easy to, it's so small and so easy to get to. I'd rather just have it plugged in there, but that's me. I'm, I'm weird. So I've just got the HDMI going to my TV and then the TV actually has an analog out that's going to my speakers. And that's how I've solved this problem. I think a lot of people will be able to solve the problem that way. A lot of monitors do have outputs, but just note there's no audio on the back. All right, the build quality of this is ridiculously good. It's 70% carbon fiber. It's really lightweight for what it is. Uh, you know, it's substantial in the fact that it's got that big heat sink on the inside, but that's like the bulk of what's on the inside is that huge heat sink, which I said, don't take apart, leave it, leave it all together. There's liquid metal in there that, that that's going to make the, the contact with the CPU and the GPU uh, much nicer so that you're going to get everything. It's going to keep everything nice and cool. So I would not recommend taking that apart. As far as taking this apart to upgrade it, it's pretty easy. You just got to remove the feet, which is a little, feels a little weird because there's stickiness under there and you're going to have to stick it back on there, but whatever. You take off the feet, uh, unscrew it, and then there's a, a metal bracket you can unscrew. And that will show you what we have under the hood. We have a couple M.2 slots. One is populated and then we have uh, two SO DIMMs and those are GDR5. Now the GDR5 is, you know, I've got it pre-installed here but you know, you can take it out and install whatever you like in there. Now, I think it's really nice on the M.2 that they've included. I'm not sure if it came this way. It looks like they, they did it themselves, but that is a heat spreader that they've put on there. I'm 80% sure they did that themselves. So when you're getting your own, I would recommend grabbing a small heat spreader as well. If you're gonna put a second one in there to upgrade the storage space later, go ahead and grab that and, and, and put that on there to keep things nice and cool. But otherwise, that's all you're really going to be upgrading with this. You don't want to mess with anything else. You know, if you want something that's incredibly upgradable, then you're probably going to get a bigger system um, and, and, you know, build it yourself. But that's not what this is. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the, the pricing on this. And I think it's in a pretty good price point because the gaming laptops with similar specs are generally a lot more expensive. Now this one doesn't have a screen, but it has some really good parts under the hood. The other thing is if you compare this to some of the boutique system builders, it's generally gonna be competitive, if not more, you know, more aggressively priced. So it's like you can get something tiny for less than the price of a big computer. They've got some fancy lights and stuff. For me, I like the size of this. Now, if you wanna get something and you're ready to get like a, a new system, this might be something that's good for you because it'll play all the modern games. It's nice and small and quiet. You can put it on your desk if you want to. Uh, the, the thing is, is that when it comes time to upgrade your graphics card, you know, it's like you might be stuck and be like, "Ooh, I can't upgrade my graphics card. It's going to be really difficult if, if I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just have to like keep it as is. So what I would recommend doing is if you're someone who, uh, you know, has a job that makes decent money and you want to use this as your main system, go ahead and get this as your main system. And then when it actually comes time to upgrade your graphics card, you'll have to upgrade to a new system and this will become your media PC or your kid's PC or, or something to that effect. For me, I'm going to use it in my living room. It's my main thing. I, I do want the ability to upgrade parts on my main system when it comes to, you know, when it comes to like my CPU and my GPU. Anyway, it's really nice to have something this powerful in my living room. It's too powerful. <laughs> Why is it so powerful? If you're wondering, before I go, if you're wondering who Minisform is, they're a group of enthusiasts from Hong Kong. So 
thank you so much for putting all your engineering powers together and making something so small and so powerful. As I was playing all those games, I was sitting back on my couch and I was using this Finnick wireless PC game controller, which I, I really like the analog sticks on this. And to me, they feel better than the Xbox controller or the PlayStation controller. D-pad I use sometimes, but I end up using the analog stick most of the time. And this is what I was using. I quite enjoy it. It feels very good. And you can use it too. I'll do a, uh, a special for this for the next week. Just go over to epicpants.com and grab one of these. I'll put the link in the description. Use the coupon code Take Control for half price, which is a, a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. So half price on this with the coupon Take Control. See you in the comments.